I think that we're ready to start. We do appreciate each of you coming out today and braving the weather. The good West Texas weather that 80 degrees yesterday and 40 degrees today. I think 80 again on Sunday or Monday, I think is what I heard. But just in time for spring break for us that work here. So our wives are excited that we can get out and do the yard work. Um, We've done several of these over the last year or so, these alumni luncheons, and, and we know that a lot of folks in Lubbock have, a variety of people in Lubbock have come and been a part of these lunches, and we've had different topics every time. Uh, we always want to try to be a resource for our alums, and so as we tar- started looking at to do for the spring, we thought, what about technology? Technology is something that so many of us encounter daily. It is something that so many of us don't understand daily. It is, is sometimes a, a struggle for us to keep up with what's changing. Uh, even just yesterday, I know a new iPad was introduced and I still struggle with my old one. And uh, so I don't know what to, uh, what to think of it all. But we are blessed on this campus to have a team of people who work in our IT department, our technology department, that really do understand it and do a great job of keeping us going here on campus. And, and not just going, but they're very innovative and they're very much ahead of ahead of the pace a lot of times and, and they do so much with with uh, stretched budgets and other things that uh, college uh, IT departments have to do and, and the leader of that department is undoubtedly Dr. Carl Mayhem. Uh, Carl is a 1981 graduate of Lubbock Christian, his wife Annette is also a, a graduate of Lubbock Christian, his son and daughter-in-law and he has a, uh, that are also alums and, and they also have a son who's currently a student here. Uh, Carl is, is a phenomenal leader for our department, uh, not just for the, for the Department of IT, but for our campus. And so many of you know Carl, and uh, in fact, Carl is such a guru of technology that even on days like today where, where Carl doesn't feel too well, he has found a way for technology to help him go forward with this uh, presentation, despite the fact that he is uh, definitely under the weather. So I want everybody to uh, please help us welcome and thank uh, Dr. Carl Mahan for putting in the work beforehand so that he can still be a part of this presentation today. Uh, Dr. Mahan. I wish I had the technology to make myself feel better. <laughs> That's what I really wish I had. Thanks for your kind words. And uh, I, I do apologize for not being feeling the best, of course. I, I hate it just as much as you do. But it does give us an opportunity to demonstrate some technology. And uh, thankfully, uh, during practice times, I recorded one of those. So you get to see one of my practice runs. So isn't that going to be a joyous occasion for you? All right. First of all, I do want to say before we show that, that we are using some of our technology today with an iPad that runs wirelessly through all of our systems and is being sent all over wherever it is. So it's, uh, technology is becoming, and if you do a technology presentation, you have to use the word ubiquitous or it doesn't count. <laughs> so, there it is. I got that check mark in. And so uh, uh, this makes us where we can move and do anything we want. And it's really mind-blowing what's happening out there with technology. And it's ex- extra challenging. And I know Matt gave me a lot of credit for what's going on. But the, the truth of the matter is we have a great team of people who are uh, most of the hard work's done by people like Robert Smith in the back who feels about the same as I do. So we must have done the same thing somewhere along the way. We must have an infected device on the network. That's what it is. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to demonstrate something here. I can uh, get out of this. And you're going to go see my iPad screen itself. And so as I jump out, I'm going to be able to go to my email, hopefully. And in the email, I emailed myself a presentation that I captured. And so now, if we can get all of our magic to work, you're going to see that presentation. You're going to miss some of my clever things. Uh, that I could do live, but we'll still get the gist of it right here. So let's see how this goes. Hello, and welcome to our presentation on technology and lifelong learning. Glad you're present today, and hope you have a, a great time during the day today as we walk through a couple of points about technology and learning. Yes, it is a changing environment. I'm sure, I'm sure where you're working as well. And uh, there's all kinds of ways to look at things and all kinds of challenges, but all kinds of opportunities that are currently available to go with uh, technology and lifelong learning idea. And before I forget, I want to thank uh, Robert Smith and Justin Brown for all their help, and all the presentations and everything. 
uh, begin with, I want to make sure that uh, we have an opportunity for some interaction. I understand that we'll be connecting with some people from outside. So there's something called a back channel discussion. And that allows us to communicate with people who are in an audience when sometimes you're in a presentation mode or sometimes when you're presenting not with the audience, which is what I'm doing if I'm doing this on video today. Uh, but uh, it allows everybody to have feedback. You can kind of hear or see what everybody's thinking in, in this case. So I have a tool called Today's Meet. And actually the address is todaysmeet.com. And then slash LCU will get you into the website we've set up for today. So if you want to open a second instance of your browser, or if you're in the room and have an iPad or some uh, device that will hook to the internet, you'll go to this website, meet.com slash LCU. Uh, you, you'll then type in a chat name, a first name, or something like that. It'll work well. Uh, then click on the join button. And you'll have another box that opens up that lets you type in. And it's about the size of a box that, uh, I think it's 140 characters. And then uh, you can type in that box, and then when you hit the save, it'll pop it over to the left where you see listen area and that allows then everyone to come we're going to go back to the human aspect just hope I do well okay so this is where we were about the back channel discussion and I'm tapping my iPad to make everything advance and so here's uh, I stole my wife's iPad so I could be in and watch what's going on. So if you type during the session in the room or outside the room, we'll see that information go there. So if you want to add any questions or you have any comments or a better way of doing things, then we'll see it there. And I already see somebody else is typing in there. So that's, that's awesome. So during our session here for a few minutes, you can type in any questions, thoughts, examples. I'll have a few that come to my mind. And then uh, we'll have some employees that are around that can uh, ask questions or answer questions. But the other thing about this is, is this can stay open for any period of time, even up to a year. I think I've got this one to be open for a week. And so it gives us another opportunity. Let's say if we were a preacher and we wanted to get feedback on our sermon, since it's a, kind of a, a passive situation, then we could attack that a different way. Generally, I like to approach life like Proverbs 17, 28. It's my favorite verse in the Bible. It says, even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. I try to not show everybody I'm such a fool. Today, I show it. Okay, I'll try to describe what I, when Matt invited me to speak. He's going to be Brad Pitt. I'm going to be Matt Damon. This is how I remember it. Okay. Don't touch your tie. Look at me. Okay, I ask you a question. You have to think of the answer. Where do you look? You look down, they know you're lying. Up, they know you don't know the truth. The seven words one four will do. Don't shift your weight. Look always at your mark, but don't stare. Be specific, but not memorable. Be funny, but don't make him laugh. He's got to like you and then forget you. You've left his sight. And for God's sake, whatever you do, don't under any circumstances. Yeah. Can you take a look at this? Sure. <laughs> I guess what he meant to say is don't get sick, right? <laughs> okay, here's my disclaimer. Uh, much of what we're talking about in technology is unpredictable. We can read things, we can see trends, we can see products going out there, but it's like playing a ball game. You can see what it looks like and who probably should win, but you don't know who's going to win until you play the game. So as we talk about some of these things, there's a lot of evidence to suggest how these things are going to go, but we don't know for sure. And this is my job, how it feels every day. I come to an ocean's worth of information, and I have with me a thimble to collect it. And that's kind of what we're doing today as we go through, in a brief amount of time, just a broad stroke of technology. So that's how we're looking at it. So this is a, an attempt to get more people to use our Today's Meet. And so you see here I've uh, got a fantastic picture of me from an iPhone with a shovel in one hand, standing beside a backhoe. And so let's pretend for a moment that I'm going to ask you to dig a hole. And as I ask you to dig the hole, I'm going to let you pick one of these two tools. And so I'm going to let you ask me one question that you can ask to decide which one of those tools that you want to dig the hole. So if you've got your uh, today's meet open there, put in there the question that you would like to ask. Uh, 
And I should say at this point, Justin warned me that all those people that are watching off-site, if you're participating, there's a little bit of a delay uh, from now. So you might have a 30 second, um, uh, you're behind 30 seconds or so. So sorry about that. That's part of what we're doing right now. But now if I was in the room and said, what would you want to know about the hole before you, before you picked your tool, what kinds of questions would you ask? How deep? How wide? What's it for? I like that. So my reason for asking that is because we take the tactic here is we don't get technology just to have technology. We try to get technology for a specific purpose. It's a tool. And so if we don't need the tool, then we don't need the tool. And so that's how we like to approach things when we talk about technology, or I suggest. This is my favorite picture in the presentation. <laughs> because this is a tool that has been used and used and used, right? And used beyond its purpose and its means. I feel like that truck sometimes. <laughs> I feel like that truck today for sure. But you can see they pile that truck full. Somebody forgot to say whoa or stop. And I love this picture because it represents so many things to me because that can also represent people. We can work our people too hard too. And so we need to be smart in how we use our tools and make sure we use them the way they're designed. One way that we can learn how to do that is through a, a process called a personal learning network. And a personal learning network is an informal way of connecting with people. And we do that today with human contact through our church friends, through our workplace, through any other associations we're a part of. And we use that to learn from each other. Well, technology gives us another way to connect and broaden that. And so for me, for example, there's only about three other people on this campus that do anything similar to what I do. I would like to learn from somebody else and so I can connect to people at all other in institutions that I can think of and organizations and expand my network. And that's how this presentation has been built on my personal learning network. So here's an example of, of a chart, be probably difficult to read for the, those of you off site, but the point of it is, is there are many different technologies out there we can take advantage of. Some of you use things like LinkedIn and Facebook and things like that. Here's a description of what that might look like if I'm the dot in the middle, and I've got the human side of my network, and I've got the technological side with blogs and wikis and social bookmarks and podcasts and radio and TV and mobile phone <coughs> texting and all those types of things. Those would be tools I could use for my personal learning network. And so that's a growing trend that technology has provided, not just for us, but for those kids that we, we teach as well. So as I started thinking about myself as for this year, 2012, and how I wanted to grow, I decided, what's the thing I needed the most this year? And it, was, it happened very quickly, what I needed. And that was wisdom, because I didn't feel like I had enough. And so that's my daily prayer, multiple times, many days, for wisdom. And so I made myself a Twitter handle called Wisd uh, Wisdom Seeker. So I'm going to hopefully bounce this over there and let you see that. So this is a main part of my personal learning network. And so I follow all kinds of places and, and people and organizations to get the latest trends and in information. And so I connect to, uh, there's some preachers in there, there's some famous authors, all kinds of organizations. It looks like right now I'm following 323 people. Uh, I've tweeted 737 times. And the truth of the matter is, most of that is retweeting what other people have put out there because I collect that then as my, it's like a bookmark of all the things that are going on. Now mine's heavily influenced with technology, but I try to get, have a broad look at what things that are important to me as a Christian, as a person that's doing technology, and those types of things. And so that is uh, one thing that I would use for my personal learning network. Uh, if you want to go and be a part of my personal learning network, or if you just want to go look at it and you don't have a Twitter account, well, there it is. And I'll be honest, when the Twitter first came out, I, I got an account and I was less than impressed. I, I, I abandoned that account. And I didn't use it for two years because it was a bunch of celebrities talking about what they had for supper and making fun of other people and that kind of thing. <laughs> I didn't have time for that. So I, have, I do have time, though, to learn. So that's what I use it for. So here's an example of some of the things I might get off of uh, Twitter or a personal learning network. Here's a bunch of charts. This came from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And it's from the America's uh, Teachers on America's Schools Project. And so it's just a, 
some pie charts about how they feel technology is working for them in their classroom. Here's some young ladies in the LCU library. That way they approach learning today is similar to this. That's a couch in a noisy environment where there's coffee and all kinds of people going through. One has a laptop and a cell phone. The other has some kind of book in her hand. Technology is great, but we still have to think. We have had an uh, example of a locksmith here in town that goes over to Texas Tech to help some young lady whose car was uh, locked. And all she was doing was pushing the button to unlock it. And she was not using the key because all she needed was to use the technology. <laughs> There's an author named Prinsky who writes an article about digital natives and immigrants and uh, aliens. And so uh, he also writes a book about uh, digital uh, natives to digital wisdom that I really like. And of course, we're all immigrants into the technology scene, aren't we? And the kids are natives. And you know what that term means in a typical setting. All right, Phi Delta Kappan is a, is a journal that's been around for quite a while as far as a Kappan. And they have a, this little picture to me represented a kid that could do multiple things. And it references uh, disruption in the workplace or disruptive innovation. And there was a book that this same author put out named Clayton Christensen called The Innovative University. And we studied this this last fall. And so you see disruptive technology in uh, our arena is online learning. And so when it first came in, it wasn't the highest quality, but people had adapted it and adopted it very well to their needs. And in today's world, it has grown in its uh, capabilities and in its acceptance. And so that definitely is where a lot of people have chosen to get some of their uh, learning. Here are some examples of how it's disruptive other parts of our society. Anybody recognize that building? It's a blockbuster store that's empty here in town. And there's a Hollywood video of which there are several. There's a Hastings store, and those have all gone out of business here in, in those particular buildings because uh, they thought hey, there was disruption in their part of the marketplace. Starbucks, where my wife likes to go, I think we own stock in it by now. <laughs> but she has an app that she holds up there in the, at the register, and uh, it debits her account. You think, well, that's pretty impersonal, but in the reality is they know her by name. It's like Norm going into Cheers, how I like to look at it. <laughs> And so she scans her little card. They say hi to her. They usually got her drink made by the time she gets to the end. They've asked about her day. She asks about theirs. And it's a personal relationship. That's an adaptive use. Here's one thing that we've tried to do here. And that is we've tried to use uh, Skype with our chat desk. So I'll take a little cell phone here to show you the screen. Skype in the chat desk. This is Neil. How may I help? Hey, Neil. This is Carl. Hi, Carl. Can you tell me how to I can computer in the library? Sure thing, Carl. What you're going to do is you're going to use a username of the first letter of your first name, your last name, and the last four... Okay. So what we've done is we've taken video and made that call personal. And so kids have gotten into that. And we put that in. I wasn't sure what to expect. But lo and behold, kids are using that. They report they get quite a bit of calls on that. It seems odd to me because most of the time I'm going to call to get my computer fixed. My computer, how can I use my computer to call if it won't work, right? But you, they're asking all kinds of other questions. Here's some resources. Oh, man, my little Today's Meet thing has got a lot of good stuff going there. Good. Uh, here's a set of resources that we use to help us, and it's called EduCause. And you can see the changing landscape of education is one that there. I'm going to show you a couple of more covers here on their particular magazine. But it's important for us to, uh, to look at this because they produce a yearly report that is very uh, relevant for us. And this last year, they teamed up with a group called the New Media Consortium to put the Horizon Report 2012. So if you're out there and you want to search this report yourself, it's free. Go to your Google uh, search engine and type in the Horizon Report and you put a year. I think it goes back as far as 2006. But it describes six areas of emerging technology every year, things we need to be cognizant of. So if you look at the, near the bottom, it says time to adoption. One year or less is mobile apps and tablet computing. And we've definitely seen that on our campus just by this. And Robert Smith is one of the most cleverest people you're ever going to meet. And he's found a way to make these connect like we're seeing today through a little device that cost $100 called Apple TV. 
and we're rolling those out across campus. Some people aren't thinking we're doing it fast enough to suit them, but doing it as fast as we can. And so uh, those are becoming very effective in our teaching strategy. Uh, the next one says time to adoption, two to three years, and it's game-based learning and learning analytics. And so the game-based learning, we've teamed up or been partnering up with a lot of different vendors to try to find different ways to deliver content. And then learning analytics, we can see about any time somebody's connecting to different systems and what they're doing and try to improve those based on their performance. And then uh, there's all kinds of ways and metrics we can measure on our learners. And then you see the four to five years, it's gesture-based computing and the Internet of Things. Gesture-based computing, your simulations, think of your Wii gaming systems your kids play now. And the Internet of Things is uh, your refrigerator talking to the manufacturer telling how it's doing or us being able to access our devices. I know uh, Annette bought me a pickup last Christmas and my pickup emails me once a month and tells me how it's doing. <laughs> it tells me how much air is in the tires, what its oil life is left, how the systems are performing. Here's some key trends that go along with this report I think that are relevant for us today as we think about lifelong learning. And that is people ex are, uh, expect to work and learn and study whenever and wherever they want to. We all are beginning to be very much aware of that. They do that now at all locations, even while they're driving down the street, right? <laughs> the technologies we use are increasingly cloud-based, and so our support is decentralized. So that's more for us. Uh, but cloud-based means we're trying to run applications and connect to things that are not on our device. We're connecting to where they live somewhere else out there. Third thing is the world of work is increasingly collaborative and it's driving the way we do our projects and our assessments in classes. In fact, when most of us went to school, we called that cheating. <laughs> Today, we call it collaborative learning. <laughs> Number four, the abundance of resources and relationships made easily accessible via the internet is increasingly challenging us as educators. No doubt, the learners are coming with different expectations of when they get here about what learning is gonna look like and how it's gonna take place. The fifth thing says education paradigms are shifting to include online learning, hybrid learning, and collaborative models. And I'm happy to say we're making a lot of good adjustments here at LCU in that same type of fashion. And hybrid learning has definitely got a really neat place on our campus because it takes the best of face-to-face -face and the best of technology and lets us do some really good, powerful things like that. So we really like that. It enhances our community on the campus. And then six, there's a new emphasis in the classroom on challenge-based and active learning. And to me, those last three fit together very well to something like this. And this is called the flipped classroom. And in the flipped classroom that we're seeing today, we're taking what used to be the lecture and we're making that the homework because they can get it on video like we're doing right here. And then when they come to the classroom, now, instead of making them go find a tutor, we're there with them to drill down and get the depth of understanding that they need and that they want. And so that flipped classroom model has really been interesting to watch unfold. And it started off in the K-12 community, and I apologize, I know that's probably gonna be uh, hard to read, but I want you to get the main headings here. Uh, how it came to be was when some students were injured or sick, they were trying to find ways to keep them going in their schooling. And so they were hooking up to them and giving them stuff to do in their hospital rooms or, or as they were uh, rehabbing back at their home and those kids were learning pretty effectively so they thought what else could we do with this well they said we got all these dropouts this graphic says 1.3 million a year high school dropouts could some of this help combat that we have all this video that's growing out there the Khan Academy you see the address at the top of that slide has over 2400 videos it's very famous it got Microsoft funding because it became so popular and it started with a guy who's trying to help his niece or his daughter do her math homework and it spread across because she showed her friends and then they said well, how about this one and so it just built and built so here's the slide I want to show you then that uh, demonstrates the effect this one school and I think this was through a study with Ohio State they went to a school and 50% of the freshmen failed English 44% of freshmen failed math and they had 736 discipline cases. Then they did this flip process where the students watched the lecture at home and came back and did their activities, which would used to be the homework. 
and not only 19% of the freshmen failed English, 13% failed math, and only 249 discipline cases. So that right there would suggest something about that may be good. And I'll put the web address down there if you want to do that. If you want to search for this, go to the internet and search for the flipped classroom. And if you put infographic, you'll get that graphic where you can actually see it probably on your screen. A lot of other resources out there for us. TCEA is one we have in Texas. And they put out a regular journal and they have a tremendous amount of resources for students out there. <coughs> Another one that's free out there, or one that is free I should say, is the Campus Technology Magazine. And I really like this cover, that's why I selected it because there's a new normal out there now. Most kids have many forms of technology, not just one. And then this is another journal that's out there that I like to cover this because it emphasizes the SAAS, which is Software as a Service. So that's where we're not deploying every piece of uh, our ever application on the device we're on right now, like this one, which I'm not tied to anything, but uh, we're running applications off that are residing on server somewhere. Okay, how much time do I have? I'm running out of time. But I, I do want to show you that there's an address that you can go to. So if you don't do anything else today, I hope you'll write down this address. Uh, it's lcu.edu slash technology. And this is an area we've collected over the last several months to see a lot of what our staff are doing. We have some very, very effective staff members and very aggressive staff members on trying to find ways the technology can make their jobs better and to be more effective for kids. And what we call at LCU, student success. And so we have all kinds of ways we're trying to attack that. Now, what we also have besides talented people is humble people. So getting them to tell what they're really doing was difficult. <laughs> so this is really informal and some of it is not directly applicable to the school setting, but just shows ways that they're implementing technology. And some of them even talk about what their grandkids have taught them. And th that's how a lot of us learn. You know, the kids will pick it up because they're natives. We're the immigrants. I highlighted a few right there, but I won't stop right now and go through all those since we're where we are on time. But one of them is uh, called Panopto, and that is a recording that I was going to show you a piece of earlier that I went ahead and stopped. Uh, but it lets us have students do their projects and record it themselves and post them in a secure environment. So instead of just being a YouTube thing, we can secure it. And that way there's not a, not a big bunch of risk if we don't want to have it or they're not comfortable with it. And some are not. Okay, here's another, I'll show you just a brief clip of this. Hello and welcome to EDU 5303. I'm glad you're in our class. We're gonna learn all kinds of interesting things to do with technology and education. Things like recording an introductory message on an iPad while walking around in your backyard. So. I'll stop there. I don't like to hear myself. <laughs> but I recorded a formal message in my class, but then I recorded this informal one to show them they could do those things. And then they even take it further, what could their students do like that? So one of the things we advertised in here was personal growth. So as we look through that today's meet, I hope we'll see some personal growth things there, some, some examples. So I'm just going to choose a one. Did you know I qualify for AARP magazine? <laughs> How disgusting is that? <laughs> they have a great technology section. In fact, what caught my eye, the last issue that came out, they had 100 apps that uh, seniors should have to look at or should use. I have a little clip here of uh, some, some kids on a couch, and they're thumbing through the TV, and they're, they get to arguing about who's in a certain movie. And so what do you think the kids do to, to, to solve that? They pull out their phones. You know, they all you know place their bets, who's going to go get the cokes or whatever, and they then they look it up and they have it within about thirty seconds. So you guys want to watch? We don't want to watch. I'm going to skip past that. Okay, here's a graph that I got from the Pew Research Center, and I'm going to show you that address here in just a moment. But I'll, I just wanted to highlight briefly the blues that are going across show activity, and as you work your way to the right where there's grays. That's no activity. And so I want you to notice all segments of society participate in internet use. There's not uh, any one group that does not. Now, certainly the younger kids you can see do a little more, but we're all finding ways to use technology to help us be successful. Entertainment is another area. We saw 
what uh, iTunes has done to the entertainment industry. And we see if we can go to get a red box down the street now instead of going to a blockbuster store. You know, that's, that was a shift in that marketplace. I have a TiVo system at my home through Suddenlink. This iPad will let me right now, if I forgot to record a ball game, turn, go to the app right here on this iPad and tell my DVR through the internet to record the ball game from right here. That's the internet of things right there. So it looks something like this if I want to record this movie. That's impressive to me and really kind of scary. <laughs> Because I don't want somebody else getting into my stuff and doing something with it, right? That's the other side that we're not probably going to get into today. And then spiritual growth. Uh, there's one thing I've visited with colleagues from our sister schools that we just had a, a technology conference with two weeks ago uh, that I want to share one thing in particular I got. But here's us in Bible class last Sunday. We're studying Mark. And they talked about a concept. We typed it up in the little search bar. And it spit out four related verses right there in, in that lesson. But if you don't do anything else today as far as a spiritual thing to think about, get the Glow Bible app. If you have an Apple device, it's in the iTunes store. G-L-O and then Bible. It has the Bible and artwork and archaeologist arche photos and maps and even some videos in there. It, uh, embed into the Bible, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner, uh, whatever I'm in mean, Matthew 3 there well there's a famous piece of artwork of John the Baptist preaching so the glow Bible is a really cool I've only had it a little bit I picked this up from, uh, from a guy at uh, ACU and the workplace has certainly changed that's kind of how we look at people <laughs> one of the interesting statistics I got was that uh, this last Christmas at least a third of all people that when they were shopping when they found something on the shelf they pulled out their cell phone and search for that device to see if it was cheaper somewhere else. And there's even an app called Red Laser. You can laser that barcode and it will spit out to you where all those devices might be. And then education, we've gone through several things. Here's the Pew Internet site. If you just love statistics, if you teach and you want to be able to throw a lot of statistics at people and social things, it's a fantastic site. They spit stuff out every day. And then if you want to learn more about distance learning and a lot of statistics on that, you can Google uh, going the distance, online education in the United States, and you'll get some good information there. And then I'm just going to show you an example very briefly of uh, an infographic, and that's the hot deal right now. And I like to learn how to do that, but it's taken what would normally be a text and turned it into picture representations. And since our devices pinch and raise easily, uh, that works well. And then just to wind up here, uh, when we talk about millennials and we talk about kids and the difference from them and us, you know, there's going to be some things that they're going to do well. They use the internet and tools as an external brain to help them solve problems. And they're technology experts. But the negative is all this has made them very much a quick fix type of kids. They don't have much patience. Our teachers would suggest this is part is true. They lack deep thinking ability because of all this fast twitch stuff. So we talk about intersecting all this technology into faith and into learning. Uh, it's not a panacea. You know, there's some good and there's some bad. So we have to know the difference in that, and hopefully we're educating the students in the same way. All right, I've got some other resources here, but I know I'm out of time, and so uh, I. Hope that you learned a little bit from that. I apologize for being disjointed there somewhat. But thank you for coming today. Thanks, Carl, for, uh, for being here and staying here and, then, uh, and getting us. Uh, I'm amazed at what I see, and I'm amazed at what my three-year-old daughter does every day when I get home and she wants to see daddy's iPad that she called, that's my notepad. She said, where's your notepad? And, and she goes, I gotta download some stuff. I need your password. <laughs> like, you're, you're three years old. You don't get my password. <laughs> but it, it's fascinating. I know we're all impacted by so much of this every day. And, and but it changes the way we do things. And it changes the way we live our lives and the way we interact with people and learn and grow and, and, uh, and lead. And so it's, uh, we're grateful for people like Carl and Robert and others and 
and our, and our team here at LCU that helped to explain so many of these things to us on such a regular basis. Uh, we are grateful for all of you coming today, and we hope that uh, it was beneficial to you. Uh, for all those that watched online, we're grateful. We hope to do more of this uh, in the future. Uh, we're hoping to do another one of these next month, so be on the lookout for information on that. I just have a couple of things related to alumni uh, events that are going on uh, here soon that I just wanted to touch on real quick before we, before we dismiss. Um, Collide is an annual day of service for our students here on the LCU campus. It was started several years ago as an opportunity to, to, uh, to have uh, students that are in social clubs and athletics and a variety of different student groups all come together and collide with our community uh, for service and volunteer work. Uh, this year, we have, uh, we have decided we want to invite our alums to be a part of that day of service. Uh, Collide this year will have over, well, probably between three and 400 students involved. And this year, the, de the decision was made to, uh, to impact one specific uh, program here in the city, uh, Tent City, the uh, homeless village uh, downtown. Uh, on Saturday, March 24th, from 1 to 4 p.m., the LCU community will once again collide with the Lubbock community in a, day of, in a day of service. And we want all of our alums that are able to come and be a part of that. Uh, there'll be some more details sent out as we go, but if you mark your calendar for March 24th, uh, we'd love to see a good representation of our former students to, to work alongside of our current students in an effort to make a difference for the folks at Tent City. Um, there's a few things going on this weekend. Now, I, noticed, I know it's, uh, the weather may not uh, excite you for these ideas, but there are home baseball games and softball games uh, coming up, or rather baseball games, I guess, home. Uh, starting Saturday, there's doubleheader Saturday. There's games uh, even next week during spring break, Thursday and Friday. Also be uh, thinking about, and if you can get online and watch, our Lady Shap basketball team heads to Kentucky for the national tournament. They'll be playing on March 15th, their first round game at 2.15. And, uh, and then also just keep in mind that uh, as alums, the transition that the university is going through in uh, terms of leadership and as Dr. Jones transitions to being the chancellor and, and Tim Perrin uh, comes to Lubbock, he and his wife and, and his, their family, as they come to Lubbock uh, here in a few months to begin their work as, as the president and first lady of Lubbock Christian. It's something that's important to all of us as alums to remember them and, and the university during a, a time of transition and all the folks that work here uh, in the midst of all that and also most importantly probably our students who, who benefit so much from what we do, what we strive to do here at Lubbock Christian. Uh, we are grateful for all of your participation today and we hope that, uh, that you will have a great weekend, uh, the rest of the week and into the weekend and uh, for those of you that get spring break, we hope you have a great spring break and Please uh, be in touch with us if you have ideas for other thoughts surrounding uh, things we can be doing to help uh, connect our alumni back to the campus. And also if we as an alumni office and a university can be of a, res a resource for our alums, please let us know of those ideas uh, also. But I want to close this in a prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Our Father God, Lord, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you so much for this place. Love it, Christian, for what it means to each of us as former students. God, we're just grateful for how uh, you have used the people here. You have used the faculty and staff and, and the, the students here to, to really, truly make a difference in this world and in the lives of each other. And, and God, we're just humbled by the fact that, that you are uh, alive and, and working here on this campus every day. And we're just grateful for your interaction with us. God, we're thankful for uh, the ways that you allow us to grow as people and to learn and, and the way technology is, uh, you know, it, it has been such a blessing for so many people to learn more about you through technology. And, and God, we know that sometimes we don't understand all the, th all the ins and outs of it, but we're grateful for people who, who spend their lives uh, learning how to make those resources uh, tools for you and your kingdom and for service and learning. And, God, we're just grateful for those folks. And we thank you so much for the group that has gathered here today and for those that have been with us uh, from wherever they are around the world. Lord, we love uh, you and we're grateful and we praise your name forever. It's in your son's most precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you.